Okay, well, welcome everybody and thank you for being here. My name is Erin and I've been a registered nurse in the state of Massachusetts for greater than 20 years. And unfortunately, I've been witness to a slow deterioration of the medical system where the conventional med medicine is failing us. And in many cases, and that would, what I have witnessed is patients are not getting better, but they're getting sicker. Um, I became a board certified holistic nurse because it helped me and taught me to treat the patient as a whole and not just treat symptoms. I'm also a vegan and plant-based athlete, a competitive fitness competitor, a NASM certified personal trainer and um, helping to heal my husband's cancer through my many years of knowledge and, put, um, and experience and putting him on a whole food plant-based diet. There he is behind me. <laughs> Can you put the dog up? <laughs> um, I'm also a freedom fighter and I'm involved in fighting the overreaching Massachusetts flu mandate for all children in order to attend public schools. It's a horrific public health policy. I believe in medical choice. One size does not fit all. There are many different ways to treat different illnesses. And my hope is to inspire people to take control and take action and take the necessary action needed to live a life full of good health and happiness. All right, so today, my very first guest is going to be speaking, um, and she's very brave, very courageous and positive, and we need brave, courageous, and positive women right now. Um, I'm going to, going to let you tell your story, but basically, you've been working in a hospital for the total of 10 years. Yes. Correct? And you, they, prior to 2020, you had the flu shot mandate, <clears throat> but you, you had the choice of wearing a mask. Yes. There is different. So if you could just tell us what happened. So uh, basically, um, at first, my employer had sent out a memo saying that uh, they were not going to make um, the vaccine for the flu mandatory this year. They basically said it was going to be encouraged. And then a few weeks later, they sent out a memo saying that it was mandatory, that if we didn't get it, um, then we would either get 30 days of unpaid leave or after, after that time, if we still didn't get the flu vaccine, then we would be terminated. Uh, and the only way out of it would be a medical exemption. And so um, I, you know, this freaked me out because, um, because I, my family, you know, a lot of people in my family have had uh, vaccine reactions and I've never received a flu shot. Uh, and so I was worried that, <clears throat> that it would be like Russian roulette, that, um, that I'd be guessing on how my body might react to it. So, um, so could you explain the reaction that it was your sister that had a reaction? Yeah, um, she actually, um, she had been getting the flu shot a couple of years. Um, she's actually um, uh, an ex, uh, an, uh, sorry, uh, an ultrasound tech. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, so she, she's been getting the flu shot for the last couple of years. Well, she's had, she, she now has a permanent rash from getting the flu shot. And she also had neurological symptoms. So she, she basically had like seizures for eight months after she got it most recently. So, you know, uh, and my, my twin sister is autistic and she has cerebral palsy. And when she was three, she, get, she got the MMR vaccine uh, and she had a seizure. And then after that, she couldn't talk anymore. And that would have been a huge advantage for her in her life because now, I mean, you know, was she's- Was it ever proven? Um, that the MMR caused it, or it was just witnessed? It was just witnessed by my witnessed. parents. Yep. Okay. Right. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, there's enough to instill fear in me about, about getting of vaccines. Course. So absolutely. Yeah. And, and so religious object, objection to it as well. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm an independent fundamental Baptist and I, I don't believe that we need vaccines to improve our immune system. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, that we shouldn't be just injecting strange substances in our bodies like that. So, right, right. yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I have a lot of reasons for not getting it. And, uh, and the, the hospital that I work at, they were um, backing up their mandate with the county order um, written by the public health officer, which was saying that there was basically no way out of it. There was no other exemption except, for, except a medical exemption. So, um, so basically I was feeling all alone, uh, feeling like, oh, I guess I'll, I'll just look for another job. And I was telling that to my son and he, he said, mom, if you're gonna lose your job anyway, why don't you just fight it? And I'm like, okay, like he he's 12. He's very smart. He's very smart. Very and and smart. honestly, and honestly, we, with him, we just had a battle because 
um, his, him and his father, his father and I are, are separated. And so, um, so we had a battle with vaccines with him and he, he just recently saw that with the seventh grade, because he had to get a couple more vaccines just to go to public school. And, um, so he already dealt with that battle and he didn't want to get the, get those either. And it was kind of like, we were forced to, because it's in the, we're in the state of California. So anyway, so he's, seeing that and going mom just fight it he doesn't he didn't want me to get it he's like come on mom fight it you gotta fight it please he was urging me so so anyway so um so i'm like fight it yeah he's he's so so smart uh, he's great he's really you know he sparked you to take action and he's 12 and he he sees the light yeah he's so wise that he sees what's going on and actually he got to go to the protest. And so, oh, that's um, and, amazing. I, and he, and he loved it. He had a lot of fun. So it was cool. It was a super good experience uh, anyway, but um, so I'm trying to kind of give, go give you the uh, sequence of events. So basically uh, I felt all alone. I'm like, how am I going to fight this? Uh, you know, it's just me. And then I look online and I see that um, one of my, you know, the people that, that I work with had posted a petition online against this thing, against the hospital I work at and the county. And, and I saw that there was like 500 signatures and there, there was comments from doctors and nurses that I know that were saying that they were against this mandate. And so I'm like, okay, well, maybe there's more support out there. So I started sharing the petition that started getting blocked on the local pages. They didn't like it. Uh, And so I created my own group page because I was tired of getting blocked. Um, And I started sharing that around that was getting more popular. And then I created the event immunity from tyranny, which was the protest. And it was going to be right before a board of supervisors meeting um, at like 7 a.m. on a Tuesday. And um, and so I planned that out. And and on the way there, I was thinking, like, is anybody even going to go to this? Am I an idiot for for doing this whole thing is I you know, but I didn't want to let people down who were counting on me me to go because a lot of people had to work because they're nurses, you know. And so, so I said, okay, I'm going to do this. So I went and I had my cowbell with me and I had my little, my little, um, whatever you call it, little horn thing that you can speak through that makes you louder. Um, and so a bunch of people showed up. We got like 30 people that showed up to protest this thing. And we're in like a small town and it was amazing. So we, we ended up, um, we started out at public health. We had a couple of officials come out and look at us like, like, like we were some kind of threat anyway (laughs) and so it it was great it was really great it was so exciting and then we ended up at the uh the courthouse which is where the board of supervisors meets and we were able to get public comments there and they were really listening to us and and it was just it was just awesome so the next day the uh public health department rescinded the order that's so that's amazing and it was you think it was because of your protest oh absolutely absolutely And um, I had actually talked to the newspapers before the protest, just talking about it. Right. And then uh, a couple different, a couple more times afterwards. And then also I had, there was a little TV spot after we did the, the protest. So there was a lot of press involved, which was great because it gives a little more pressure to the public health department. Now, so. can you talk about how the Department of Public Health in your town is related to the actual hospital administration? Because usually they don't make the policies for the hospital. Right. So, um, and I recently discovered this after the protest, but uh, basically there are public private partnerships. So um, in, in my county, it's called NACHO. It's N-A-C-C-H-O. And um, basically it represents cities and counties uh, that they, the hospitals go together with the public health department and then they make agreements and things uh and part of it is in regards to immunizations uh and basically they provide some funding for that sort of thing so the the local healthcare facilities may um get benefits or money from that group the nacho oh, wow. nacho group and that's just one that's just right. one way they can get money they yeah they can get money from any number of ways so yeah and i know you so mentioned- um, so i discovered that later Okay, and you had mentioned that um, if the hospital gets a certain amount vaccinated, that they get reimbursed through Medicare, I think you said? 
for a minute? Yeah. So, um, it, and this falls with the Healthy People 2020 initiative, mm -hmm. which is it's yeah. basically an Agenda 21 type of thing. Right. Um, what they want to do is they want to get 90% of healthcare workers vaccinated at any at any given facility. And so, <clears throat> when they reach that threshold, they get more more of a reimbursement from Medicare. So that's right. another way that they get more money. Yeah. Right. And and I know that like they'll get more federal money too if they if they have to right. get a certain amount vaccinated. If not, the federal government won't give them the money. So it's it's really not about health. Unfortunately, right. it's about policy and money. So it's definitely not exactly. about health. Yeah, um, exactly. So I know there was four things you said because you <clears> wanted to help others kind of do the same thing you did. So you said you create a page, you also did flyers. Yeah, so I, I actually printed flyers. I just I just bought a couple of printer cartridges, printed flyers out, and I brought them door to door. This way you're avoiding censorship. No one's going to censor you. You just you just put them on, one on their doorstep. That way you're not uh, littering. And it's just a great way of getting the word out there, especially for people that may not be on social media. So Right. And that was for the protest information? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then... You said that you put out rules for the protests and can you talk about that? Yeah, so um, I had actually researched um, ahead of time some of the, the rules that you should follow when you when you have a protest because you wanna be the most respectable possible when you have this right. because uh, you don't want there to be any reason that they don't change the order. So, right. um, so you know, you want, you know, no jaywalking, stay out of the road, use the public sidewalk, uh, you know, don't, don't go on public, I mean, don't go on private property. Um, and you want to respect law enforcement. Uh, there's a lot of different rules that I, that I listed on there. And, and mostly you want to respect people and property. So, um, because you don't, you don't want there to, to be any bad press about your protest. It's, it's just all, you know, it's all about free speech. So. How did your son feel about everything now? He had a blast. He was so excited. And then when they rescinded it, he was so excited. He hugged me oh. and everything. And, and oh. he was holding my immunity from tyranny sign. And so he got, he got to be in some of the pictures and, oh. and it was, it was so cool. It was so cool to participate in something like that with my son so that he, he knows how to do it. He knows how fun right. it is and how and how important it is for his rights. So yeah. It's really important for children because you know, when we were growing up in school, we were taught almost not to ask questions. You know, people are nervous to raise their hands and if you raise your hand too much, you were seen as like a nuisance. People are scared right. to ask questions. So right. it's good that your 12-year-old is is watching you take action and saying this doesn't feel right to me right i'm going to ask a question about this and if i don't like the answer i'm going to go out there take some action and and get the answer i want and if they don't want the answer i want then they they don't deserve me yeah because i'm going to leave i'm going to walk away you know so yeah i'm so proud of you oh and that is going to be really um important for him and right. I think that it might change the really the direction of his life. He might want to be someone that wants to speak out. Oh, totally. You know what I, I mean? totally he might want to be way. someone that's in the protest or leading the protest or taking the charge. And these yeah. are the kinds of kids that we need to to raise right now. But that's, that's not right. happening, unfortunately. You know, we're isolating them. They're socially distanced, physically distanced. We're not encouraging them to be with other people. And it's a sad, right. sad situation right now. But I'm so glad that you as a mom took the initiative and it's moms and the feminine that we need to put out there right now. Because we right. all need to stand together in That's this right. tyranny because it is tyranny what's happening. Exactly, right now. exactly. It is. And the more women and females and we can get together and um, bring out our feminine because we are the mama bears. You right. know what I mean? And it comes from yeah. a place, place of love. It comes from a place of wisdom. Right. And the more we do of that the hopefully more we can get rid of the tyranny you know that's right yeah, yeah well, and and that's the thing is um is it a lot of it is mothers that are getting out there and they're protesting yeah. and i'll tell you this morning they are doing a protest um over in nevada city yeah. and i i had somebody that had messaged me like they're like they're gonna pass this mandate we don't know what to do give help us to know what to do and i said 
I, I basically shared with them my posts that I had about all the, about oh, how good. to do it and everything. Good, good. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, oh, okay. And I, I basically was like, contact your board of supervisors and basically giving them all the, all this advice. And they, they came back to me saying, we've been making phone calls all day. Thank you so much. And then yes. now freedom angels is involved and they are huge <laughs> they are. and, and they've got, they've got policemen involved and firemen and all kinds of people that are going to support this today. Awesome. And, and yeah. I'm so excited for them. And you know what? they're already backing off on the order they were backing off on it yesterday wow now what order was for this the for? protest this Wait. is for the mandate for the flu vaccine for their it, county and in uh, the hospital yes yes mm -hmm. for their county for the whole county in uh nevada what City do you mean for the whole county for the people nevada, the the it's the public health department for nevada county that's mandating it for them for the people that live in the county for the, for, the, for the healthcare workers. For the healthcare workers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, for the healthcare workers. Yeah. So they yeah, want so all the healthcare workers to be back. It doesn't matter if if you're healthcare worker, long term facility, clinic, hospital, they want you to take the shot. Even dental, yeah. Even dental. Okay. Yeah. So this is what's happening in Massachusetts right now. So um, a lot of the hospitals are requiring it new. You know, just like you, last year you could wear the mask. This year everybody's wearing a mask, but now they're forcing you to get the shot. Right. So now they're saying, well, they have a, you can use your religious exemption. So they say, okay, we're going to use my religious exemption, but they say they want a clergy to sign it, or they <laughs> want more of an explanation. You know what they want to, you know, have a discussion about their religion. So it's just it's just a mess. Uh, I'm not sure how we can cross that and, and win, but um, that's why I wanted to talk to you and just kind right. of set up a plan. I think it's, you have to get local. Right. You, you have to right. go, maybe, yes, you go to your board of health, talk to your supervisors, you know, and then. So, so in, in your case, is it just your hospital or is it your county that's, that's mandating it for you? No, it's the hospitals. Oh, okay. It's not, well, our governor, is mandating it for long-term facilities. Okay. So he's involved, but the hospitals, um, you know, usually you have a choice. You can right. wear the mask or get or get the shot. But right. this this year, mostly it's it's just get the shot or get out or use your well, original exemption. And what is your deadline for that? Um, it's different for each hospital. Okay. You know, okay. so I work with a group like Freedom Angels. I work for, I'm um, not work for, but I participate in a group that follows all the, I don't want to say the V word because I don't want to, oh, you don't, no, I don't want to be censored. So for all the, for all this, the whole schedule. So we follow the legislation for the shot laws, you know, and so um, we're helping to fight the flu shot mandate right now. Right. And more and more people are getting pushed back on the flu shot in, in their jobs. So whether it be long-term facilities or hospitals, the governor, like and I, I said, go ahead. Uh, well, I will tell you, um, if you ever get the chance, there's a, there's a playbook that the CDC wrote about the COVID, about the CV vaccine, whatever, however, however I can say it, that it, that's okay. Right. right. But um, they, they did a playbook and part of that playbook is, basically forcing the flu vaccine first so that's part of the plan obviously right. i mean it's it's you can tell it's all over the place um so so if we can fight this now and especially if we can kind of gather now and get to know people and connect with other people um we're gonna have to fight the next round you know the next the next one so um so this is all part of the plan to mandate this first and then mandate the other one. And they start with healthcare workers. And it's, it's, it's funny because people think, oh, I'm not a healthcare worker. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me, but it's going to come to them too. It's going to so. come to them too. And, and it doesn't matter if you're a nurse, if you work in, in the um, cafeteria, you know, you can stand up. You don't need a million That's titles. Right after your name, you know, don't wait for that person, right? Don't wait for that right. doctor, the, the, the manager. They're not your saving grace. It has to start with you. Right, right. And then like and you said, you were alone, you felt alone, but you know, people came.
because you you were the one you you took the lead you know you were the trailblazer and people followed you people are just waiting for that for one person right (laughs) yeah and and that's what's crazy is that you 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 know you can't let your insecurities or even your fear of losing your job you can't let it prevent you from taking right. action. And I actually, I was speaking with my coworkers over the text and they were all feeling like, I don't know what to do, you know? And I'm like, I'm mad. I'm not, I'm not going to give up. I, you know, I'm done being afraid. And that's kind of what you have to do is conquer your fear, get over that fear of losing your job and go, you know what? I'm going to be even more out there so much. And I'm going to have my name out there so much that if they do fire me, then they're going to get bad press. That's basically what you have to do is say, right. I'm going to be out there so much that they won't, they won't be able to do anything because then they know that they'll be held accountable. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yes. so yeah, you just got to get out there. You got to be strong. And most importantly, you got to stick together. You have to support each other. If there's a few people that are willing to share the information online, that's great. You know, share to local pages, like look up things for your county, for your city, um, anywhere that you can share it. And even if you aren't allowed to share it, share it anyway and let them delete it. Right. But at least you got it out there, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Um, I just wanted to say that mandates benefit manufacturers. Oh yeah. You know, it's it's it, that's is really what it's all about. You know, I can't stress enough. It's not about the health of the people. It's not about saving that immunocompromised patient. And what do you do in the hospital? I'm actually. I just do. I schedule appointments. So. Yep. And yeah, so I'm, I'm nothing fancy. <laughs> you are though. You're like more fancy than the people <laughs> with the million titles by their name doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, right, this is amazing. This is this is um this is what we need, honestly. And you should just be all over the internet right now. I, I think you should create your own page on how to create a protest or like the four things you said you did you create a page you sent out 300 flyers you Mm -hmm. scheduled the protest and you wrote the rules for the protest right you know and it would be great to just have that as a resource for people to go to right and actually part of it too that really helped was was I I did a write-up just kind of explaining that we were just against the mandate we weren't anti-vaccine I explained how many signatures were signed on the petition like indicating how much support there was for this and so um, doing that write-up and even sharing that really actually cut down on a lot of the trolling because I had a lot of trolls laughing at me at first right and so when I did that it kind of answered all the questions so nobody had any questions And then, uh, and then also just keeping people engaged by always posting like daily memes that are funny, um, and posting those to different pages and then say, Hey, go to the protest. And they'll be like, what protest? And when you share it from your page, they can link back to that and find you again. And, uh, and so basically you're keeping people engaged by, by posting a lot. I posted pictures of my signs that I made. I posted a picture of me passing out flyers, like just trying to say, Hey, I'm doing this people. You, c- you got to come join me. You know what I mean? So right. it, it, you got to keep people engaged and keep the conversation going. It's right. basically what I'm saying. So yeah. All amazing tools to make something happen. Take action. You have inspired thought and you take the action and you did that. I think a lot of people have the inspired thought, but they don't do anything. Right. About it. Right. So I don't know if you and- ever heard of, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, uh, if you do want, uh, I mean, I have like the list of kind of instructions of how to, yeah. um, I have that on my page, the Wairika Scoop is what it's called, Wairika Scoop page. How do you spell that? Because I know it's a different name. I know, I know, sorry. Y-R-E-K-A. And that's Facebook? Yes. Okay. All right. And I'll put that in, in I'll link it in too. Great. All right. Um, you know, while we're talking about the flu shot, I want to touch on some points on the flu shot. And me being a nurse for over 20 years, I've seen some horrible side effects from the flu shot. Mm. And it doesn't happen to everybody, but it can happen. So the more you, the more people that get the shots, the more harm that will be done. So this is not a good policy at all. It's not a good public policy at all. Um, it increased the risk of respiratory infections. I've seen... Um, 
my seven-year-old patient this year got the shot, got a swollen eye. This was actually last year, I'm sorry, and he missed the whole week of school. So you're supposed to get the shot to reduce your uh, work days out and your school days out, but he actually couldn't go to school because he had a severe adverse reaction. Um, right. And then I have a couple that I take care of and both of them got the flu shot and the wife got extremely sick for three days and she's supposed to take care of her husband and they had to isolate themselves in their own home. And this was just about two weeks ago. Um, I've seen a patient with Guillain-Barre and uh, one of my elderly, I have an elderly man, he got the flu shot and he was unable to walk after. So those are the it's things trouble. that my professional experience that I've seen and that the, the flu shot cannot be for everybody. It just, it's unethical. It's not based in science and it just is not gonna work. Um, it has the problematic ingredients is the marisol and it breaks down into the body into ethyl mercury. That's been known to increase your C-reactive protein which is inflammation. Inflammation in a pregnant person um, is very toxic to a fetus. It's never been um, proven to be safe in pregnancy. It, inc it does not stop influenza like illnesses. So you're still gonna get flu-like symptoms and flu-like symptoms can put you in the hospital. So we're getting the shot to stop the actual influenza virus but it doesn't stop you from getting flu-like symptoms. So a lot of people will get the flu and then they get flu-like symptoms, but it's actually not what it's supposed to be preventing you from. And the risk of that is, of getting the actual influenza virus is actually quite low. Um, and then of course, if you just wanna prevent it, you wash your hands, you eat healthy. I would promote a plant-based diet. That's just what I would do. You get plenty of exercise, drink plenty of water, decrease your stress and um, exercise regularly. And I just did wanna mention that healing is a lifelong journey into wholeness. We wanna seek harmony and balance in one's own life and family. And it's a process. I, and a medical system should be a true healthcare system which people can receive adequate non-tap toxic, non-invasive assistance in maintaining wellness and healing for body, mind, emotion, and spirit. But that is not what's happening right now, obviously. You know, right. when it comes to um, a forced mandate, it's coercion. That's an abusive relationship. We do not want to be in an abusive relationship, whether it's your employer, your, your partner. You know, we, we cannot advocate for that. It is coercion is not informed consent because informed consent is sitting down with someone, going over the risks, the benefits, and the alternatives. <laughs> And when it's forced, you don't get informed consent. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, and that's the thing, that's the thing too, uh, that I would just kind of advise is that, you know, if you're going to be fighting this, focus on the mandate part of it. Um, right. Everybody has different views about right. getting the flu shot or not getting it, but you want to, you want to really focus on the mandate because most people have a problem with the mandate. Most that's people right. don't like that. They're, I mean, think about it. It's, we deserve informed consent. We have a right to say, uh, I don't think my body's going to react right to that. I don't think that's right for me. I'm going to go ahead and say, no, we need to have that right. I mean, we're human right. beings. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that's not happening, unfortunately. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to put a link in. It's, it's Eureka. Why Rika? Why Rika? I know and that's how to song. say it. Why Rika? Why Rika? Yes. Yep. Uh, oh my gosh. Uh, how are you doing in California? I don't know. How you... <laughs> <laughs> I know we're, we're, we're bizarre over here. No. Um, but, but yeah, but it, it is exciting. It's exciting to fight for something and right. to have a group correctly. You know what it I mean? Is. Right. And yeah, I just want to encourage people stand together, stand strong, get out there and fight, fight for your rights. Cause no one else is going to fight for your rights for you. You got to do right. it. Right. Yes. So. Well, Lori, you are an amazing woman. I really appreciate who you are. I appreciate what you did and taking the time and giving us the tools to um, make change in this crazy time. So you are why we why Rika Scoop? Why R E A K A Scoop on Facebook? Well, yeah, why R E K A? Why Rika? Why Rika? Why R E K A? Why R E K A Scoop on Facebook? 
Yeah. And hey, right. thank you so much for having me on. And yes. you, you just have such a, a good, strong spirit to you. It's awesome. Thank you. You too. Very as nice well. to meet you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye. Community members are protesting a mandatory flu vaccine for all healthcare workers. Oh, freedom! Medical! Freedom! Medical! Freedom! Event organizers called this morning's protest outside the Siskiyou County Courthouse immunity from tyranny, advocating for healthcare workers to choose whether or not they get an influenza vaccine. In early September, Siskiyou County Public Health made the announcement that healthcare workers are required to get the vaccine during this flu season. The department says the overlap in symptoms of COVID-19 and the flu, along with a lack of effective treatment for coronavirus, requires additional public health intervention. But some healthcare workers who were protesting Tuesday disagree. We are about choice. We are not anti-vaccine. We are about making a choice. And if there's a mandate for something uh, that takes away my informed consent, and I believe that's a basic human right. Siskiyou County Board of Supervisors member Lisa L. Nixon declined to comment on the matter, but says she heard the mandate could potentially change tomorrow. We reached out to Siskiyou County Public Health today, but we are still waiting to hear back.